Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, I can feel the energy, and when you get an applause just by saying welcome, it's going to be a great event. All right, can you hear me okay? Come on in closer. We have media to my left grabbing the shots that they will tell the world about this great exhibit, but we want everybody to hear this if you can. Come on in, and what's going to happen is we've got some remarks about the exhibit. I want to introduce you to some really special guests that we have uh, today, and then in this studio space behind me, we're going to get a special treat with a live performance from one of our Hall of Fame inductees. So stick with us. It's a very exciting day here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, we're dedicating our newest space at the museum. It's called the garage. And this garage space is a spot for visitors to experience what it's like at the very beginning of any band. It's a garage, it's a loft, it's, um, it's a warehouse, but it's that same vibe. This is part of our continued transformation of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is a terrific museum. I think it's the greatest museum in the world. Be there we go. Everybody standing here has important moments in your life tied to rock and roll. Every single person here has memories of those that we've uh, done great things with, times our heart were broken, times we fell in love, the greatest road trip ever, and it's all to rock and roll, and this place brings that alive. Well, 13 million people have walked through our front doors with those exact same feelings. 13 million people have come here to experience the power of rock and roll. They've done it in our beautiful exhibits. They've done it in our great classroom programs. They've done it when there's been live bands on our stages. Now, for the first time, they can come here and put guitars around their neck and actually feel the power of rock and roll in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think that's worthy of some applause. You know, we're joined by some really important friends, and I want to thank all the hands that went into making this exhibit possible. So this is, uh, today we have our donors who are really important to us. They're funding this transformation. Donors, thank you. We have, okay. We have media that are telling the world about this stuff. So we really appreciate you, media. Thank you for being here. We have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's rock star staff that's putting all this stuff together. In this space, it was all hands on deck. Every department participated in this everywhere. The posters on the wall, those are from our library and archive, archival collection, those actual posters. The, the digital stuff that was designed was done by our team with some partners. I'm gonna mention a couple people, but the big messages that everybody shares in this success. Uh, Karen Herman, who you're going to hear from shortly, and the curatorial team killed it. Uh, Rob Weil with the production team. Uh, ben Jones, um, Tim Parnon, and the tech team. Uh, uh, Joe uh, Wickens leading an important part of this. Zoe, project managing. Mandy and Jason and John on the education side. Thank you all for everything you've done. The reason this space feels so great is because our staff is also filled with a lot of musicians that have spent a lot of times in clubs, in bars, in garages, in basements. They were on the committee too, and we told them to keep us honest, keep it authentic, and continue to make this feel like a real rock and roll environment, a real garage, a real space. So the musicians, thank you for keeping it authentic. Um, we thank the donors already. I do want to thank some sponsors. This floor, in classic fashion, the sponsors for this floor, Fender Guitars, Gibson Guitars, Martin Guitars, Sweetwater Music, and DW. Let's hear it for them. They're really important because the gear in these spaces is real gear. You know, these aren't bottom of the line pieces. When you put a Telecaster around your neck or a Les Paul around your neck, it's the real deal. It, it's the same Les Paul that the people in the Hall of Fame were playing. It's the same telecast they were playing. It's the same guitars that were on stage at Woodstock. That's what people feel here, and that's really important. Um, as we celebrate today in the contributions of all those people, um, I do want us to pause for a moment and celebrate the life of somebody in Cleveland that was so important to rock and roll in this city, so important to rock and roll, frankly, globally, and it's, uh, it's Mike Belkin. 
Um, you all know the Belkin brothers. Uh, Mike Belkin passed this week, and uh, we want to celebrate his life. He and, and Jules created a major rock and roll hub here in Cleveland. They created knowledgeable fans that were passionate about the music, and their work, Mike Belkin's work, is a big reason why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is here today. So if we could recognize Mike for, thank you. Our mission is to engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll. Engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll. There's nothing like being engaged by putting a guitar around your neck, playing some keyboards, thumping a drum kit, getting a little feedback. Nothing like it. And, um, you know, to teach the videos in here, you're going to learn how to play a song in just a couple minutes. Even if you've never picked up a guitar before or never held a drumstick, you're going to learn about that. You're also going to learn what it takes to get really good at something and have new added appreciation for the pros that do this every day that are in the Hall of Fame. And then to be inspired by the power of rock and roll. You know, to actually be able to create something, to feel that satisfaction, to play these things that you've seen throughout the museum from other artists, but to play them here, to see the iconic pieces over there, to design some band, band merchandise yourself, that itself is inspirational. So we, we continue to do these things to this museum. We have the third floor with the Connor Theater. We have our new plaza with 100 Days of Music. We opened our Woodstock exhibit a couple weeks ago that's off the charts. We opened our Vans Warped Tour exhibit that's amazing. This is just one of another step in our succession of transforming, improving a place that was always great, making it better. We have big plans for the future. Some of you have heard about them. There will be a time when we expand this building over to the Science Center. We build spaces to do the things that will impact more and more visitors to Northeast Ohio, residents in Northeast Ohio, and rock and roll fans all around the world. So we're really thrilled this is that step. Um, now I'm honored that we're joined today by a whole bunch of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame trustees. Let's hear it for the Hall of Fame trustees, please. <laughs> Including our past chairman, Mr. Chris Connor, who's a guitar player himself, Chris. And our current chairman, who is Paul Clark. And Paul has been in this role for a few weeks, and he's with us for, it's a three-year term. He's been involved with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame from the very beginning. In fact, the check that was cut for IM Pay to begin the work on this building, a young Paul Clark picked it up at the bank office and had it express shipped there. Now, Paul, um, in this role as chairman, he was recently the, the past, North, past president of PNC for this region. He is now chairman of the board of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. PNC has been terrific for the museum. Paul is terrific for the museum. But today in his intro, the most important piece is that Paul started out in a garage band on the west side of Cleveland. Now, they were in the basement, but they were a garage band and so I want to introduce Paul Clark, the former guitar player of Just Us. Perfect. Yeah, it was in the basement. And the, the band got its name when Mrs. Jablonski used to yell down the stairs, what the hell's going on down there? And we'd say, it's just us. And somewhere is a bootleg tape of our only live performance at Kathy Simon's eighth grade birthday party in Bay Village. So if any of you know where that's at, Big, uh, big reward for bringing that one home. I'll just take a minute to amplify some of the things that Greg mentioned. Welcome. We're really happy that you're here, and, and thank you for being here. Um, this is just one of many things that are going on, and I hope you have a chance to experience all the cool things that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have to offer you. I want to amplify the thoughts about our board. Um, what a board, and to represent all of you and give voice to all of you is just a real privilege in my life. I mean, the bank gig was good for 43 years, but I got to tell you, the first three weeks here have just been awesome. <laughs> Pays a little different, but uh, nonetheless. So thank the board members that are here and the donors. None of this happens without the generosity of the donors that we have at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Everyone on the board we asked to donate has donated to what you see and what you're going to see and feel today. Uh, and so many others of you have participated in helping us uh, bring to Cleveland the very best 
And so thank you for that. I, from the bottom of my heart, I just really appreciate your generosity. Um, I'll leave it at that and leave you with the opportunity to meet Karen Herman. I did not know Karen for a while as I got involved in the Rock Hall. And as I got to know her story, her background, and the curatorial expertise that she brings to this effort uh, blew me away. And what you're seeing today is Karen Herman. So Karen, join us. <laughs> wow, wow, thank you. Wow, that's, that's pretty good. But just like rock and roll, um, this project was a collaborative art. It was a complete collaborative art. There are so many people that are part of this. And uh, one of the things I know that I was brought on here to talk about was how this came about. And um, it's really wild to really see it in fruition because we started this um, four years ago when we were master planning the whole museum. As you've seen, we've done different parts, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame floor and um, everything that we're continuing to, to do. Um, but the really, really cool thing was um, we were like, we've got to have a place to play. It's been 20 something years and there's never been a place where people can actually pick up an instrument and play it. Um, and you know, I am um, head of the curatorial team where we have all these artifacts and everything and we couldn't really break the glass and say, hey, go ahead and play this Les Paul guitar or this Aerosmith guitar. We wanted something in between where people can pick up an instrument, really feel it, and then see a lot of the wonderful pieces that we have in the collection and be inspired by that. So I think that's really important. But then going back that four years, you know, it was basically like, well, maybe, you know, people start in the garage, so maybe let's call it maybe the garage. And, and, um, and we had five like vision board sort of pictures <laughs> and, um, you know, really no, no idea of how to really bring this to life for the hundreds of thousands of people that come here every day. Um, so I think we did a really good job of really trying to put all of these things together. So if you've never played an instrument, this may be the first time you pick one up and you go, gosh, that's a lot heavier than I thought. Or um, if you're a, a seasoned musician, you know, you can actually jam at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How cool is that? How many people get to say, I play guitar at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Now you can. Um, and then we said, you know, this is also, rock really connects us. So wouldn't it be great if we had a place where people can come together and play together? So, you know, we have a jam room, so people, whether you're a band and want to come in and play, or you just um, meet somebody who's like, oh, I can play this song and I can play this song, let's go in there and do it. So it's really a place that we, we really thought a lot about. It took a long time for us to really come up with it, but I think we got it right. I really do. It's iterative. I think we're going to see a lot of changes. You come back next year, who knows, it could be completely different but I think we really, really got it. Um, and I do want to also make a shout out really to the education piece of this. Um, if you go to the, to the uh, practice room, you'll see that there are lessons for every single instrument in there. And I think it's really important to um, talk about that because I think this museum, and I, I hate to, I really hate to bring this in, but um, I'm, go I'm going to. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, I know he's not necessarily the most rock and roll guy you ever Mad. But I did, I did have um, an opportunity to interview him in my past life 20 years ago, almost to the day. And he said this, he said, the best teacher in the world is somebody who loves what he or she does and just loves it in front of you. And I think that's what we do here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame every day. And I think that's what our incredible education team put together in this room. And I also want to just give a shout out to Mandy Smith, our director of education, who... <laughs> who has really uh, taken the lead on that. She's in the back. Say hello if you can. And, um, and her crew, and I hope everyone can really uh, get a chance to meet her and, ask, and try out some of these wonderful things that we've done. Um, again, thank you very much. It's an honor and a pr pleasure to be a part of this, and I want to bring Greg back. All right. Thank you, Karen. That was terrific. In our parade of thanks, there's one other um, group that I didn't mention, and that's our staff put a lot of hours in, and it's the family members of our staff. <laughs> They picked up the slack, so family members, thank you. So, uh, you, you know, growing up, we were big, of course, rock fans, and uh, loved uh, 70s rock and roll, loved the big FM bands, loved it when punk rock came in, but then our world really got rocked when somebody took some of that stuff that was familiar to us and turned it on its head, and that was when Run DMC blasted out some Aerosmith, and... Uh, turned us on our head. So I'm really honored, you know, the Hall of Fame is a special place. We tell the whole history of rock and roll, but we're also a place that honors the very best of the best. And in this art form, it's all about impact and influence. Did you do something that pushed the envelope? Did you take it in a new direction? And um, 
Run DMC certainly did that in a big way. And Daryl McDaniel, DMC, continues to do that today with his bands, with his uh, social uh, activism, with his support of different charities. And, um, you know, I think it, it's best to say that in 2009, the band was inducted. And they were inducted over here at Public Auditorium in Cleveland, Ohio. And they were inducted by Eminem. And when Eminem made the induction speech, he said this thing over and over and over again. And what he said was that two turntables and a microphone changed the world. The guy on that microphone is none other than Daryl McDaniels. Please join us, Daryl. Thank you. Hello, hi. Scared to death for putting me in this position, but it's an honor and a privilege and it was inconceivable that I would even be in this place. And even more important uh, of a blessing to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But the question is, what's the most powerful, th and, by, and by the way, Fred Rogers is gangster. <laughs> Mr. Rogers is gangster in all the right ways. But a lot of people think it's the fortune and fame. No, a lot of people think it's the stadiums. No, a lot of people think it's the arenas. No, a lot of people think it's the amphitheaters. No, a lot of people think it's the theaters. No, didn't a lot of people think it's the club? No, no. they even thought it was the discos, remember those? No, what is the most powerful element of all this rock and roll stuff? It's the spirit. And where does that spirit choose to haunt all the souls and people walking the earth? It all starts in the garage. So what we're doing here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, rightfully so, is honoring the birthplace of the greatness, not just of the creators, but to all of those that hear, see, and experience the beauty of the soul and spirit of rock and roll. I was a little kid growing up in Hollis, Queens, New York, and it was 70s rock radio. Like, let me tell y'all, I cared nothing about soul music. I didn't care about afros and dashikis and, and say it loud, I'm black and I'm not proud. My thing was Harry Chapin, Jim Croce, Joni Mitchell. So like you rightfully said, it was the power to bring people together. So this is the source. Everybody think it's Hollywood and it's the big tours and it's the bright lights. No, none of that exi would exist. It would have never manifested into what it is today if it wasn't for all that greatness being primed and toned and welded together in the, the in the garages of our universe. So let's thank the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for always saluting the things that should be celebrated. Wow. Here, here. Wow. So um, thank you, Daryl. Thank you very, very much. Um, so operationally, we have a move here. For our, for our media capture, we're going to open this garage door and officially dedicate this space. That will be captured. And then the real official dedication will come next when we hear some live music coming out of this garage, all right? So bear with us. We're going to get this shot, and then we'll get set, and we're all going to get to experience the power of rock and roll right here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ready? Check one, two, one, two. You guys one, two, one, two. Oh, so, this band, so Run DMC, first hip hop band on MTV, first hip hop band on Saturday Night Live, first hip hop band on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. 
And now, the first band to play in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, DMC and the Hellraisers. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> about this place is over there you can partake in sampling your taste for rock and roll. You can pick up an instrument if you was inspired by a great guitar player like an Eric Clapton or a great drummer like John Bonham or a great singer like Michael Jackson. You now can participate. So we don't want to scare y'all so the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame created the garage so it could feel like it's at home. And like I said earlier, when you see those rock and rollers and those musicians up on those great stages at the stadiums, it might seem hard. It might seem difficult. You might be afraid to go over there and play the keyboard. You might be afraid to pick up the drums like my girl Veronica over there. But we want to let y'all know. It's not that complicated, but it can be a little tricky. This beat is quite a title. I think it's very vital to rock a rhyme that's right on the right. Enjoy this wonderful room. 
I have a question for all of you over here. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. What about my people right here? Are y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. What about y'all over there? Are y'all ready? Yeah. So Charlie, you got Apache? Let's get Apache. Before we go, I want y'all to know something. I don't know what you've been told. Real MCs on rock and roll. TMC still will devastate the mind control. I got a question. Are you ready to rock and roll? Check it. I don't know what you've been told. Real MCs really rock and roll. TMC still will devastate the mind control. Got a question. Are you ready to rock and roll? Hey, are you ready to rock and roll? Yo, are you ready to rock and roll? All right, Charlie, stop. Rock and roll is a spirit. It's a transformative spirit. And the beautiful thing, especially for our young people, it's very therapeutic. It can help our children, if not to become rock stars. Getting them involved in the arts can build a confidence about themselves and their self-esteem and inspire them to be great and to learn and to want to learn. So on that note, Charlie, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Yo, Rich, you ready to go? Oh, yeah. Veronica, you ready to go? And I know my man David's ready to go. So, this room is just asking you one question. Are you ready to rock and roll?